So we've used a variety of games over the course of the project, and for a wide range of reasons as well. Um, used Sonic Racing just for a short um, few weeks of one term for our maths, uh, as a way to get kind of authentic data for the students to use. Um, so you'd see they'd check out lap times, um, and it would vary between people who were successful, people who just couldn't get to grips with the game. Um, and that we'd rank it, obviously, top to bottom, and then they were playing around with different ways of organising that data, um, and use that data then to influence how they would play the game the next time around. This was all played on iPod Touches. Um, so then they would work out, okay, so if they had one playing of the game, they'd concentrate on getting as many weapons as possible and firing them off, would that actually improve their performance, or were they better off just concentrating on trying to go as fast as they can and um, on the driving aspect or they might uh, race it one day without using the brakes as opposed to trying to brake as they hit a corner so kind of using it as a decision making tool and to see what the best possible outcome would be I and mean, obviously with the best possible outcome being getting around as quickly as possible um, another game we played was Play which was similar to a ball game Pandemic um, with uh, they, they were in control of a virus and trying to spread it around the world as far as they could to kill off the population. Um, so evolve it as they went, um, tr trying to get an understanding of actually what diseases do do and ultimately how we prevent the spread of disease. So we kind of then flipped it on its head for the, the rest of our, our unit. Once they understood what ben how diseases benefited from you know, poor hygiene or unsanitary conditions, then they can start to think about how in the real world we limit a disease and its spread. Um, loads of statistical information from it, loads of different ways of graphing the information, really got them thinking about how they display their own facts and figures, you know, what's the best way to do it. And they could understand that through games, you know, everyone understands a little heart icon. You understand that's how much life you've got left. You understand... You know, if something's going from blue to red, that it's a, that's a bad thing. Um, you, you don't need that to be explained to you anymore. Um, so that was all using it to for them to produce infographics and understanding you know different ways of displaying data and information. Lots of data and information in one hit. Um, something that was really fantastic for. Um, so some kids would try it through different things through um, you know a different kind of graph of showing how it spreads through Australia. Um, and then they took on the challenge that once they spread the disease, they then wanted to try and cure it within the same game. So they would start to devolve it to try and limit its spread and see once they'd got over like a 50% infected population, could they claw it back again? Um, so they were really playing with the actual goals of the game itself. They weren't necessarily playing it how it was meant to be played. Um, Again, different ways of graphing it. Um, and we went from very, you know, very basic bar charts up to, as you saw, the different kinds of infographics. Um, this year, we've returned to the Minecraft unit again that we did two years ago, um, and it's the premise is pretty much the same as it had been before, but we've made some tweaks to it. We've just worked out how it had. Um, really gone well last time, how we can improve that. We've dropped certain aspects of it, we've tried to refine it, narrow the focus. Um, and I think it's allowing us to kind of move more smoothly through it. There are fewer tangents that kids are getting hung up on. Um, Beck was saying to me earlier that it was a shame that we dropped one of the design elements from it from last time. We had a, a big a kind of two-week project in SketchUp where they had to design their own spaceship. But for so many kids, we found that was just a drain on um, the amount of time they could actually put into the other research aspects of it. And also, if they didn't have the skills to work in SketchUp already, then it would take a lot of time for them to get, to feel like they could produce something that they were proud of. So we've kind of circumvented that this time. Um, we've really been very careful mapping it out against the Osvell strands. And again, we talked about the 21st century skills that Victoria seems to be <laughs> You know, really focusing on throughout all of these gaming units. Um, so we're able to really crystallise our focus for it. And as I said, the good, time, good thing about this time around, we've learnt from what we did before, and we know that we would have said that last time it was an absolute success, but that didn't stop us from wanting it to make it better this time and changing things around. Um, 
I think this time we've got a much better understanding as teachers of how we're using games and what the goals are. Um, we didn't hear a peep from parents this time. There's not even a, a voice of dissent about what we're doing. Whereas last time we would have parents up in the yard saying, oh, I hear you're doing Minecraft in the classroom. We don't really want that. Um, that's all gone. And the interesting thing is that we've actually got the sibling of a child who went through it the first time and their parent did complain this time around perfectly fine with it <laughs> so exhausted parent better child, better child <laughs> it could well be could well be or maybe it was so good first time that well exactly I think part of it we have changed some perceptions um, another game we played uh, as a part this time that I would say was a qualified success was the ASX share market game um, doing that as part of our maths unit which is such a rich um, experience that's kind of available for them I don't think we executed it terribly well as a faculty I think it really needed more time than we gave to it and it needed to be the star of the show rather than something running alongside the other things that we were doing in maths but it was such a shame because it's it really was fantastic in terms of the kind of global citizenship that they can get out of it the understanding of how markets work how countries work you know, we could have gone into national debt, we could have gone into um, different kind of styles of governance and uh, certainly financial governance, um, but we didn't give it the time. I think that was to the detriment of that. But I think we'll probably revisit it again at some point. I'd hope to anyway, because I think it's a, it's a great <coughs> resource. Um, it's yeah. utterly realistic. It's using the ASX 200 companies I think it would be a real shame if we didn't do it again. But we've got to do it better. Well, like we've got the support of a principal who lets us try these things in the first place and try, try again and, you know, get things better. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're very lucky there. Um, other games we've played, I uh, said, share market game, Legends of Zork, which we got from one of these sessions. What was fantastic about Legends of Zork with it being a text-only game, um, I've got a blind student in my class. She could play it through having um, the technology where the computer mm. reads it to her. So many other games, because they're so dependent on the visual element, are not accessible to all the students. And I think that's a real problem. And it's something that I think we haven't really discussed as a group looking into this project is that if we're serious about having digital games as a text taken seriously in schools then they've got to be accessible to 99% of the population mm. and I think until they are or until we can find a way to select the games appropriately then I think we're really lacking in what we're trying to achieve here um, because it's like even this Minecraft project there is no way she can access that mm. so it's discriminatory mm. and I think until we can overcome that and really select games that aren't discriminatory, I think ultimately it's dead in the water. Mm. It doesn't matter how brilliant the research came out, how brilliant the results, if kids are left out from it, we can't do it. Mm -hmm. Well, we shouldn't do it, considerably. So um, how did this, what happened with this girl with the other games that you were playing? Well, with some games, like with Legends of Zork, she could do it. With the share market game, that was compatible because, again, it's very text-heavy. Um, in um, using the JAWS program mm -hmm. where the it will read out line by line what's on the screen mm -hmm. and she can navigate through a menu she can know what's going on she was actually our one of our most successful students early on in the gameplay before I, th I guess people were able to really mm -hmm. rapidly move through menus and things visually then she started to get left behind because it just takes so long to listen to a menu rather than to look at it and look at a screen and you can say, go straight to the bottom right corner. She's got to listen to the whole page before she gets to the bottom right corner. Um, We've had conversations with her doing the Minecraft unit for the RLP because she's in my district, um, her integration aid, and I've been talking about how to overcome that. And what we thought was she is still doing the research about what she wants to build, but she's actually we've actually got her Lego. So she will build in real hmm. world what she wants and then as part of a team, her team will then transpose what they've built in Lego into mm. Minecraft mm -hmm. so she can actually feel and, and, and see mm. what she's doing. So there's a way for her to take part in the unit, but that's still not her taking part in a digital game. Mm. So it's not it's equitable. Yeah. Um, but leaving that downer to one side... Um, 
I, I think it really is important because I think it's something that we can kind of forget about. Um, go back to game making and stuff, and one thing that I think really ought to be picked up on was one of our students' games. Um, this was the game that he made. I'm not even sure which program he used to make it. But in terms of um, in terms of gameplay, we were saying it, it really kind of does resemble uh, an early '90s platform mm. where you've got to interact with the characters around you. You've got to make decisions. You've got the text comes up as speech. Um, so this he used stock animations from it and everything, but he was the one that put it together, coded it, made all the options possible. Um, and so in terms of making games in grade six, it just kind of blew us away. And he actually did most of this in his He actually got me to write a note home to his parents to ask for him to have more time on the computers at home to do it because he was spending all of his EY, all of his class time helping everyone else in the class <laughs> because he'd been pegged as the expert. People needed him. So he didn't actually get to do any of this at school. This, you know, he, he had the permission to actually go on after tea time and spend a couple of hours a night building it. He then actually couldn't even bring it in because he'd made it in such detail that the file sizes were so large he couldn't save it and export it. So he had to then find a way of recording, you know, recording his screen. So he played it at home, made a video of it, and then exported the video and still had to bring that in on a USB stick because it was too large to email. So I mean, just the amount of work he put into it was crazy. Far beyond anything I could do. Or, or grade six? Grade six, yeah. Mm. I'll pause it there. You mean you get the idea? If you want, if you want to see more of it, then it's on the on one of our blogs. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to share. Uh, well, we we have played Civ Four as part of one of our units, looking at how um, really we can't keep. It was in our government unit, wasn't it? Mm. Um, I've got to say, I'm not sure how successful it is at really kind of marrying up with the aims of the rest of the content that we're trying to teach. I think it's. I think it complements it. It does complement it, but in terms of a driver, mm. yeah. I'm not sure. So I think we've had, a, again, it's another, you know, we've got the full spectrum of experience we've had with how successful games have been in the classroom and how well you can use them um, as an accessible tool or as something just to drive learning. Um, and I think we could probably place every game somewhere on that scale of success and failure. And I think we're getting more success than we are. Mm. Yeah. You know, we certainly get more hits than misses with it. But um, that's not to say they don't happen. But as I said, even with the Minecraft unit, it was a fantastic success two years ago. We've still changed it and tried to do something different with it and tried to refine it. Um, whether or not we'll do it again in the near future, I don't know. I think that'll be up for debate. I think a lot of people feel like once we've taken that as far as we can, try and do something different, 